Well, it looks like the Xbox Series X might not actually be the next-gen Xbox console. I know what you're thinking. Rob, what the hell are you talking about? It literally is. We just seen, you know, the showcase about it. But did we see the showcase about the Xbox Series X? Or did we actually see the showcase of the Xbox Game Pass? Ah, think about that for a second. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel once again. I am Robert Storms. If you're finding me for the very first time, please be sure to click that like and subscribe button. Every single subscriber counts. It's very, very important. That way you guys can stay up to date on all future content. So please hit that subscribe button. So last week, well actually last week, sure, a few days ago rather, on Thursday, we got the uh, Xbox Game Showcase. And I, I said, you know, I don't think it was a horrible presentation. I think it was about where PlayStation was, but PlayStation, you can really see where they're hammering home these games. And something very important happened to me at the end of that presentation. And I actually talked about it later on that night on my live stream. I was like, Microsoft almost felt like they went out of their way to not sell me an Xbox Series X. And what I mean by that is everything on that presentation said Xbox One, Xbox Series X, or PC. I think for the most part, there was like maybe two or three games that did not say Xbox One, but every other game said Xbox Series X and PC. Now, I recently purchased a gaming PC for the first time ever in my life, but I bought that gaming PC for work to do this sort of stuff, you know? So I didn't buy it strictly for gaming, but then I started thinking like, well, Halo Infinite is going to be on PC and Xbox One. Like, why, why would I go out and buy a Series X? You know, like, like, why would I go out and drop five, six hundred dollars on a Series X when I can play it on either Xbox One or PC? Doesn't make sense for me. And not only that, but every game that they showed is going to be available on Game Pass. Now, I've been preaching Game Pass for a while now. For at least the past year, I've been preaching Game Pass. If, if you have an Xbox, you need Game Pass. Game Pass is amazing, right? You just pay like $10 a month. If you got the Ultimate Pass, which gives you PC, you can just pay $15 a month. You get Xbox Live, Xbox Game Pass for Xbox, and Xbox Game Pass for PC. Such a great deal. Hundreds of games. All the exclusive goes right to Game Pass day one. So... Even if I didn't like the way Halo Infinite looked, Game Pass, $10. I get it. I don't have to drop $60. I don't have to drop $600 on a new Xbox Series X. I can just play it on my PC, play it on my Xbox One. So the, I started thinking about this, and others apparently started thinking about this. And it comes to this article by The Verge that says, Xbox Game Pass is Microsoft's true next-gen Xbox not the Series X, and I absolutely agree with them on this one. Um, if you were heading into Microsoft's Xbox Game Showcase yesterday to witness a demonstration of why the next-gen gaming in the world's most powerful console matters, you were probably left a little disappointed. Microsoft's event featured a solid showcase for the future of Xbox games studio content, but it did little to convince me why I should buy a Series X. Thank you! That, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, right? The, the, the showcase itself is not as bad as a lot of people want to want to let lead you to believe, right? You go look at it. You had Halo Infinite. You had Fable, Forza. They added a lot of new games, State of the K3. Um, you know, again, they're, they're really solid games. The problem was it didn't tell you why you needed an Xbox Series X, Right, like I've been preaching, like Xbox Series X, man, it's gonna be the most powerful, blah 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 blah. And then the presentation comes out, and everything is either on PC or Xbox One as well, coming straight to the Game Pass, you know. And then they were doing this whole X Cloud thing, so that was my biggest problem. It wasn't that the game sucked, it was like there was no, no kick to tell me, like, hey, idiot. Get an Xbox Series X. Like, no, there was nothing of that. They did not convince me on getting an Xbox Series X, where PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation Showcase really showed why you need to get a PlayStation 5. If you want to play Horizon 2, Miles Morales, Spider-Man, Ratchet and Clank, you need to get a PlayStation 5, where Microsoft's like, yeah, you can just play it on whatever, you know, you want. Do you guys know how to sell new consoles? That's not what you do. But I digress. Let's get back to the article. 
Instead, it made it clear that the Xbox Series X is just one of many ways you can play Xbox games and that Microsoft's true next-gen focus is on Xbox Game Pass. I've been writing for months about the importance of Game Pass and Microsoft's strategy to leverage the subscription service to reach many millions more Xbox players than traditional consoles do. Microsoft wants to build the Netflix for video games and early indications show that it it bet is already starting to pay off. It's bet's already starting to pay off with 10 million subscribers. Some developers also reporting in increase in game sales and many more players. And Microsoft has some big plans ahead with X Clouds for Game Pass, particularly around the ability to instantly play games and demos. Um, so yeah. That's pretty much what what's going on here. Xbox is now getting into the Netflix, you know, where, and, and to be honest with you, if I was Microsoft, this is probably smart because everybody wants to argue, like, who's better, Xbox or, or PlayStation, like, the console wars. The console war is pretty much over, guys. Let's be real. The console war is over. It is no longer, we're, we're not dealing with just my, my box versus your box. That's it. Microsoft don't care about the boxes. Microsoft don't care if you, you're playing on the Xbox One, your PC, your phone, your tablet, or an Xbox Series X. If they get these, this X Cloud, and I've tried X Cloud personally, and X Cloud is amazing. If you play Destiny at the resolution and frame rate that I did on a cell phone, that's phenomenal. That's absolutely phenomenal. So I do believe that what The Verge is saying in this article is 100% accurate. We are getting into the day where Microsoft, is, this, this could be Microsoft's last home console, to be honest with you. For, for all we know, the next console could be as big as this. And you just plug it in your TV, and this is like 500 gigabytes. It's like, boom, you plug this in your TV. You put you, you you sync up your controller to it, and you got Game Pass coming right through your TV. For all we know, the next generation after this generation of Xbox will be something like this, because we are Microsoft isn't interested in spending all this money to build this tech box when Game Pass is their money maker. They want to be Netflix. PlayStation tried it with PlayStation Now. PlayStation Now does not work. Uh, it, it's fine. It's really expensive. You need really good internet. Where X, where, where, where Xbox Game Pass is, you download it, you play it, you got the full game. You know, every time there's a new release game, you get you get a new game. And, yeah, that's pretty much what's going on. And I, I have to tell you, as a fan of Game Pass, I can kind of see where Microsoft is going. And I understand their mindset behind it. So I do think that the next-gen game console, it will be powerful. It will be, will be able to run stuff. But I don't think they're pushing it to, to try to compete. Almost like Nintendo did, right? Like once Nintendo got to the Wii, they're like, look, we're not trying to compete with the PlayStation and Xbox anymore. We're not trying to push our graphics to like super realistic type things, right? Like we're going to worry about fun factor and portability. And then they came out with the Wii with the motion controller, the Wii U. And then with portability, they came out with the Switch where you can take it anywhere you go. The Switch is massively successful, right? So I think Xbox is like, look. Sony wants to keep playing in that sandbox, go ahead. We're not competing with that no more. We're competing with subscription service and trying to build our platform into the next generation of gaming. And I don't know, maybe it'll work. We heard that Halo Infinite is going to be a 10-year plan. There's not going to be another Halo game after Halo Infinite for 10 years. They're going to try to build this thing up sort of like Destiny, where I guess they release new story missions every what year or something. I have no idea. Um, I do know the game does not look polished. The graphics do not look good. But for all we know, that could just be one version of the game, and there's going to have different textures and race tra trace, ra uh, trace, map, whatever the fuck, trace rating or whatever the hell they call that thing where you just go in and you, you like make it look better. But for all I know, that's what's going to happen. So I do believe the fact that, yeah, this could be Xbox's last last true gen console and they're trying to get into the netflix market so anyway guys that's my thought on it. xbox what do you guys think is this in fact the last of this next gen console do you think game pass is their current model that they're trying to push over the xbox series x and the six xbox series x is basically second fiddle or just irrelevant at this point it's just a way to get you guys to get the thing so anyway guys that's my thoughts be sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you're new to the channel leave your comments tell me what you think subscribe to the channel for all future content and until next time as always everybody i am robert storms and that's my opinion